back to Everyday Struggle. Nadeska here with DJ Academics Wayno and another special guest, Denzel Curry. What do you do? So nice so to so finally so have you on the show. Guys, it's good. Show us how. Coolin', man. Good, my G. What up, Wayno? Yeah. Looks man, like the Wayno. Oh, shit, like, down. Like it's down. It's down. You know what that mean on the street, Wait, nigga? Oh, that right. mean you don't fuck with a nigga <laughs> like that. All right, cool. Damn, yeah, you Before just gonna dab me up. Before the camera start, oh, like, no. he knows what? He knows great <laughs> God damn. He did it. You Absolutely. All right. So nah, I have to correct a nah, card. Nah, nah, nah. I'm just fuck with you. See? What are we? Nah, I'm fucking with you. Yo, welcome. <laughs> Did the good out um, Your fans have been hitting us on Twitter all the time, like, what, what are you going to do to have to get Denzel up here and this and that? I've been a fan of you for a long time, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, we did it for the fans, so I hope you guys are happy, too. <laughs> so how you doing? You got an album out this week. It's coming out in three parts, so two are already out. Yep. Another part's coming. We got yeah. a lot of questions for you, but why the three-part, well, three-act rollout for Taboo? Because I wanted to make this shit theatrical, and I wanted people to understand like what part of the album they was in because I've been saying in interviews like, okay, you're gonna have a light part, you're gonna have a gray part, and you're gonna have a black part. So for people not to get confused, they'll be like, you know what I'm saying? Which one's the light part? Which one's the gray part? Which one's this part? How you know when it starts? So I'm gonna show you where it starts. This is the light part, which already came out. Mm -hmm. This is the gray part, which already came out. And then you're gonna hit the black part, you know what I'm saying? which is when everything goes to shit. I wanted the album to go fucking backwards because usually I start off really dark and then I go light. Uh -huh. I was like, no, light to dark. I just mm. wanted it. Like, imagine a plant, right? And it just turns into shit. Mm. <laughs> like, just turns into boo-boo. Like, just <laughs> turns into doo-doo, you feel me? Yeah. That's how I wanted the album to sound like, you know what I'm saying? It's interesting because a lot of people are putting out the double albums, right? We just got another one from Wiz, super long, 25 tracks. So it's interesting that you're this is your strategy then. Right. A little different than just being like, here's one super long project that maybe side A or side B or like really has no flow. So, uh, question, my fault. Yeah. <laughs> all, all three parts, are they different parts of you? Well, pretty much, yeah. Mm. But the whole thing is just like, all my personalities are in this one thing, but if you listen to all my albums and stuff like that, it's all different chapters of my life and shit. You feel me? When I was creating this album, it was literally what happened from 2016 2017, what happened in 2018. Mm -hmm. And that whole process of making this album was like finding who Denzel Curry was, you know what I'm saying? And in the process, I made a, like, I made an alter ego called Zeltron in the process and shit, okay. which is like, I don't know, it's just a fucking crazy ass entity, entity where I put all my personalities in one person right. so I wouldn't go crazy. Hmm. And I thought I did it before in 2016 because I created a personality called Ultimate Denzel Curry, but it seems like Ultimate Denzel Curry wasn't is ultimate as he says he was. Yeah. So I created Zeltron to like really embrace each and every personality, every spec, every detail to formulate this one album, like to build it. And that's what it was on the road, you know what I'm saying? When I was creating it. And 2016, it was just like, that was like a real dark period of my life. But everything was happening for me at that same time, right. you know? You were on the XXL freshman list in 2016, yep. a great class. Yeah. I was in 2016, freshman class. Um, I went on tour for like a full year straight. Um, what do they call it? But what people don't see is like, I had to move out my crib and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to go back to my parents' house. I had to deal with what? like, huh? Why? Like, just because like, what happened was like, my friends like, you know, I didn't want to pay like the rent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be the rent all on me and shit. Yeah. Cause my friend just lost his job, yeah. and like we was all staying in this one crib called the ULT house. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving up the house, I gave it to another friend. Like, look, Forbes, you could take my room. Twelvin's gonna move in, and this is when me, X, Ronnie J, um, JK the Reaper, like my homie Seamus, my homie Lord Lucian, all of us was staying in this one crib. You know what I'm saying? And then like when Shane lost his job at Whole Foods, that's when I was like. Nah, I can't pay for everybody, you feel me? Cause we had a system. Like only four of us like would pay the rent and some the people that were staying there only had to worry about bills, but you could come there and create cause that's what it was. It was like a creative trap house. Yeah. But as soon as that was done, we just left, but we still kept it as a creative trap house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, I went back to my dad's spot to regroup and rethink everything, what I was doing. And then at that time frame, it was like, yeah. I was kind of at odds with my family, at odds with like, Management. I was just mad for no reason. Mm -hmm. This was me. Like I was dealing with like eternal shit. Mm -hmm. Like I was dealing with like breakups. I was dealing with like people not fucking with me because like whatever. You know what I'm saying? 
And then when I got out of that hole and then went on tour, plus it was smart enough to like save money going back to my dad's and like just traveling because it would make no sense to pay for a crib yeah. right yeah, then and there. there. It's you know cool to saying? hear the human side of it. I think yeah, a lot of yeah. times when you're a fan on the outside looking in, it's easy to be like, why did you disappear? Why didn't you put this out? Why don't you do that? But like, I mean, gotta remember people go through real shit, you know? Yeah, but I could tell you why I disappeared like for a while. Cause I wasn't really like fucking with anything though. You know what I'm saying? So. It was like I was watching all my peers, everyone from my freshman class to my um, homies, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They blowing up and shit. And the people that you think are going to be there wasn't really there when I was going through shit. Because everybody had the, either their own agenda or was just like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, I'll get to that. So like, it got a bit discouraging for you? It got a little bit discouraging for me until, like, I had to make choices on my own. I was being selfless to a point I didn't care about myself. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And then... It had to be the choice of do you be selfless or do you be selfish? Hmm. And I had to be selfish for the right reason. You know what I'm saying? So I moved to L.A. I didn't have a place to stay when I was in L.A. I didn't have no house, nothing. Like, I was just bouncing around from, like, hotel to hotel or from, like, fucking Airbnb to Airbnb. But I didn't have no set location until I met this girl named Kelly. Mm -hmm. And she let me crash at her crib for, like, five months. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just no rent, nothing. And then, like, eventually... She became like a part of my life and shit. Yeah. So I ended up getting a crib and then I was like, yo, since you helped me out throughout the bullshit that I was going through and recording this album and people talking shit about me and people not fucking with me and like realizing who your true friends was, yeah. realizing that your family is going to be there no matter what. Right. Like, I had to go through all this shit. And then it like it was kind of a thing where I had to figure out like, yo. Who the fuck Denzel Curry was before I started smoking weed, before I started like experimenting with acid, before I started really getting deep into this music shit, before I started doing anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Before all this cloud or fame, whatever the fuck mm -hmm. was happening at that time, who he was. And then when I stepped back, I started to realize like, I was fucking up staying where I was. I was, stag I was making myself stagnant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When did you sort of have a breakthrough? So I have this post, I believe this was from March of this year, where people, fans were getting nervous that maybe you were really going to take a break for a bit and like fall back, right? So you said, my biggest fear is not letting myself, my fans, and my family down. I know you only want me to release music and you'll receive it, receive it but as of now, I'm not fucking with anything and life doesn't mean shit if your purpose is not fulfilled. I meant what I said. Do you it's, feel like you've found that purpose now? At that time, I mean, it like you... I've been found a purpose, but it's just that like when everybody wants you to make the choices they want you to make, mm -hmm. like fans demanding you to do shit, like, you better drop something like this or you better do it like this, nigga, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, shut up. If you don't like my shit, bounce. Like, if you fuck with my shit and you want me to evolve, that's the people I need in my life. Mm. Like, period. And when I was, wasn't fucking with shit at the moment, I was talking about social media, just seeing all, everything that was going on at the time. I wasn't fucking with none of that shit. Sometimes it's entertainment, sometimes it's overwhelming. And I'm just like, man. Do you feel pressure to be extra on social media? Like some artists like get a lot of views just because of the antics. People tune in to watch. Do you feel pressure? Do people around you pressure you to do that? No, nobody around me pressure me to do that. Not my management, my, mm -hmm. not my friends, nothing. But it's just that I'm not going to play the bamboozle game. I'm not doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's not me. Well, I think like, you know, what I'm really appreciating from hearing all of this is just you being a man. Because it takes a man to admit like, you know, having this height in his career and then like things going left for you. And you saying like a lot of artists would not admit that they had to go live with their parents. A lot of artists wouldn't say, yo, I was down and then another person built me up. Even when we was just talking about like you sticking with the same guys that you stuck with. Like what was the moment with you where you had to understand well, what you understood who Denzel Curry was prior to all this shit? Like when was that moment? Like, before or after? When you was just saying, like, you, you was like, yo, I was trying to figure out who, who Denzel Curry was. Like The moment I stopped smoking weed. <laughs> okay. I'm saying, if you smoke weed, you know, that to each his own. If you do whatever, to each his own. But, like, me, I felt like the most clarity I had was when I stopped smoking weed because I remember, like, all the shit I was making when I wasn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. When I wasn't smoking weed, when I wasn't drinking, when I wasn't doing anything. And then... And I was like, you know, when I wasn't doing all this, because I knew my life was going to be boring at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, what do I do from here to keep me happy? And it was just me focused on what made me happy when I was like young, 
drawing made me happy. I'm an artist. Right. Like I was drawing before I was rapping. So writing made me happy. I write a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. Like freestyling made me happy. Like going to, that made it fun to go to the studio and shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just like going to lay some stupid shit down, and the stupid shit comes out to be something really dope, and then you polish it and make it. Right. And just like the process, and just like you know, just um. You know, just living my life and going back into martial arts and stuff and shit like that. Cause Lit. I was really into, like, Lit. really into martial arts. I'm really into it. Like, I'm so into it. And then the same day I stopped smoking weed, I signed up for Muay Thai. I was like, I'm <laughs> see, I told you, I, I take Muay Thai to too. Go. Yo, yeah, 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 you, you know what <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 man. This shit. Is <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. I think he's he taking these classes because Jay Z took him, bro. <laughs> Um, he always got some little silly and, 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 ass joke. Wait, wait. Well, okay, so, so this is 2016. I would imagine that if you're on a freshman cover in 2016, that's like the I've made a moment though. It, was was it was it was it not that for you? I mean, I didn't really give a fuck about shit. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't care about nothing, bro. Like, I really didn't care about nothing, dog. Because at that moment in my life, it was just like depressing for me. Okay, but, but but career wise, maybe even like maybe money wise too, right? Like you were doing all right, but you should yeah, say mentally, right. mentally, mentally, I was fucked. You, you you were just not the person you should have been. Yeah, cause like you know when you go on tour and you fucking mad hoes that mad rappers probably fucked already, and then you're like, you know, you taking drugs and you're like you just like not in your right moment. You snapping on management about stupid shit. Mm. Not everything's not coming to you the right way. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm de I had to realize I was dealing with eternal issues internal issues with myself mm. and I was projecting it onto others. You get me? And at the same time receiving energy from all these fucked up people, you know what I'm saying? Which makes me more like messed up on the inside. That's a, that's very grown of you to acknowledge that. Like did someone else help you to get to that point or or was it just you just a feeling within from just saying I'm just not feeling this. I'm not happy. No, nah, like it first started with me when I was in Miami and just realizing like, okay, for some reason I knew like, you know, just being in your hometown, like people were just gonna start hating you for something. Mm. For some reason, right. somebody's It's unfortunate, but all artists like deal with it, right? And, and majority of the artists that do unfortunately lose their lives, they lose their lives in their hometown. I mean, and that's from New York to LA to Florida. Right. It's always comes from home, you know? Yeah. I'm just like, yo. I looked at everything and I was like, if I don't do something now, I'm gonna get into something, some bullshit with someone or some, or just anything, even with myself yeah. or with my family or whatever, or like people that claim to be friends. Yeah. And even with my ex to a certain degree, I was just like, you know, so I broke up with my ex and I was like, I'm moving to Cali. I need to get away. I yeah. need to clear my head for a while. Yeah. And that was like majority of 2017. I've been to a few of your shows before too, and I like, like your shows is an experience. Sure you know is. <laughs> like it, your show is definitely experience. So you like, try to climb the rafters at South by Southwest or something. Yeah, <laughs> like your shows an experience. So I wanted to know, like, is that a moment? Like you were saying, like you had went on tour. Was that a part of your life that was keeping you afloat through all of this? Like your experience with your fans yeah. firsthand? Like yeah, definitely. I mean, I like meeting people, but when it's like a whole bunch of people trying to meet me at one time, I get overwhelmed by it, and I'd be yeah. like, no. Nah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah, tour keeps me afloat. Like me performing every night. When I'm, I think of the most negative shit before I go on stage. Mm -hmm. Like like what? Oh, just shit that happens in my life. Yeah. Just shit that I don't fuck with or like that I felt embarrassed by or just anything. Anything that irked me in the littlest way, I just go on stage. Even think about like my brother sometimes, like because my brother passed away in 2014. Mm -hmm. That was another reason. I w didn't even get a chance to grieve my brother's death mm -hmm. until 2016. Wow, sorry to hear that. Yeah. So that was like another thing that like really was bothering me. And every time I go on stage, I think about things that really bother me and I just rage. And mm. that's why you get all that anger and rage and like, mm. and why it turns out. Well, like look, that. people obviously like connect with it, right? It's like a form of therapy for them. And I actually want to play a clip from your Clout Cobain video. The press release that came with this was pretty incredible. Let's roll a snippet first. I don't even know what the bill. They don't even know what's real. Try tears with a dollar bill. I'm out trying to make a bill. Oh, why you wanna take my soul? I'm yelling out ill news. I can't even trust my press. 
All right, so I want to hear just a little bit about you putting this together, but the release that came out with this said it's an inspirational wake-up call to fellow artists and their fans that the cyclical modern-day minstrel show does end lives prematurely. There was more, but like clearly this is not a light video. So uh, where was your head at going into this? Bro, it's just a circus. <laughs> <laughs> the industry is a circus. That's a fact. Yeah. Well, what did, you, what did you get from it? I mean, I understand what you're saying, but again, I'm sort of also on the inside. So for me, it was like, oh, I want to grow up and be a journalist. And you get in the industry and you realize all the horrible shit that goes on. And I go through phases like you a lot. I disappear. They're always like, you don't post enough on social. You don't this and that. I'm just like, I just don't want to be a part of the bullshit sometimes. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I guess like from your perspective, it's even heightened because you're an artist. You deal with it on a much bigger level than I ever will. I mean, I have the choice to deal with it. Is it I deal with it or I don't? We all do, right? But ultimately, we were passionate and we wanted to follow our dreams, and that's why we're here. So yeah. it's like mm -hmm. balancing your dreams with the politics and the bullshit. Yeah. I mean, from this, like, from the song, I really wrote it because I was like, I got into an argument with a friend mm -hmm. about something, about something that I did. You know what I'm saying? And then I was just like, yo, da da da. And then not looking at it from her, like, her perspective, I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I was a bad friend in that moment and then you know me and her are like good good friends now but like it was the fact that like I wrote it because I was like somewhat angry and somewhat sad at the same time because a like, friendship had ended mm -hmm. and then I just wrote it right there and whatever was bothering me I just wrote it right there and I wanted to put it simple for everybody to understand well not for anybody to understand because I know not everybody's gonna understand what I'm saying but one thing people will do is ask questions what I got from it, because, you know what I mean, it's kind of graphic, especially at the end with the, uh, it showcased suicide pretty much, right? Right. And um, it, watching the crowd um, interaction with, especially when you pulled out the gun, right? It was basically kind of like, well, kind of what hip hop, especially even social media is to, to an extent, right? You want to see something happen till it happens, right? Because the, the, the crowd reaction was like, kind of almost like do it do it do it until it happened and it was like oh shit it happened yeah. you get me and uh that was a reminder of, of really how just not only even entertainment but how life is and yeah, i just held a mirror up i held a mirror up for everybody to see what was going on i didn't do it to offend no one but in a society where everyone likes to be offended mm -hmm. some people are going to get offended and if you are offended then that means i was talking about you Mm. But yeah. at the same time, it's just like, bro, it's just reality. And the reason why the video is creepy because it's real. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like people are scared of the truth. Yeah. You can't handle the truth. I can't handle the truth. Like if the government was to, you know, come out and say we did this, this, and this. This is why this happened. This is why this happened. We would lose our fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It it, it kind of reminded me somewhat of um, Lupe's bitch bad when he did that video about like um. You know, it's like kind of showcasing, like you said, like showing everybody what's going on. Because now I just see so many people who they act and pretend like they want to see a lot of this shit. But ultimately, like you said, like when it happens, then it's a whole nother story. Yeah. But just what was your like your mindset? With, like who directed that video? Um, Zev Dean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, it was just like interesting to see, like, you know, because... I've seen like bits and pieces of stuff from you. Like I'm not going to sit here. And, like we we know each other for a little minute, but a lot of our interactions been in person. Yeah. I never really got a chance to be a fan of you. I I got to know the person before I got to know the music. So it's like kind of new for me to see, um, and see what your perspective is after you telling me all of these these things about you, and to see that you're growing in such a different space. And I think people will have like a perception, like they'll see you and see you got dreads and there's a few, a few colors on your joints and think that you're a certain type of artist, but you're changing that narrative with the content. Nah, because you could put a meaning behind anything you do. You know what I'm saying? Everything has a meaning, you know? There's a reason why I got a nose ring. My brother had two nose rings and I was gonna get two, like for him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. two different ones, you know what I'm saying? Cause he had two studs, so I was going, like, I already looked like my brother in the face. Mm. So that's why I did it. And then when it comes down to colors in my hair and shit, like, I'm a fan of Dragon Ball Z, so it's like three forms, of, <laughs> three forms of Super Saiyan. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. Like the exactly. blue is like Super Saiyan God. Blue. I know. The yellow, Super Saiyan 1, 2, and 3. Mm -hmm. And then you got the red, which could be K.O. Ken the Super Yeah, the K.O. Ken, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Florida rap, um, you know what, I, I think the, it's probably the best representation of like, um, a, I, I'm gonna still say up and coming, just like 
new like resurgence of like any particular region but like it, it it's so different you have like pump who makes a certain type of music you have you make a certain type of music like it's you have kodak who makes a certain type of music right yeah. um what do you think about the scene hey i think it's beautiful honestly everybody's their own little you know what i'm saying everybody's their own person in this one little scene you know nobody it's not like we're all gonna be like I mean, everybody grew up on Trick Daddy, Trina, Ross, like we all grew up on that type of stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, like when everything was formulating and when they was doing their own thing, we was looking like, yo, where, where do we come in at? And nobody was trying to, you know, give that hand at first. You know what I'm saying? Now they are, but like at first they wasn't trying to give that hand. So when Perp came out and Raider Clan came out, that's when we was like extending hands and mm -hmm. stuff like that. We was like trying to help the generation. Then Raider Clan disbanded, then the blueprint happened. And then the people like Pump, Kodak, they followed different blueprints. But the ones that like came from Raider Clan, you could see it in the industry. If they wasn't a Raider Clan fan, they was an ASAP fan. So they even had a blueprint that they followed, you know? It's like really prominent. It's yeah, I, we was talking about the Raider Clan thing because like the first time I got introduced to Raider Clan was like with um, ASAP Rocky. You know what I mean? Like him being affiliated with ASAP Rocky and like Space Goes Perp. That, that Space Goes that's, that's Yeah, that's Space yeah. Goes Perp. Space goes perp. Mm -hmm. Like sucking nigga dick for 2011. Right. I remember like going to a lot of like shows and that was such a big thing. And like when I look at it in terms of Florida, like it's kind of changed the way New York has changed. You know, in New York, everybody feels like you can only do music a certain way, right? Yeah. In Florida, I mean, I grew up when you said like Trick Daddy and Trina and shit. I grew up on that stuff too, growing up here, because I didn't really, I didn't regionalize music, you know. And it became for a little bit where every artist from Florida was just coming out on some wild shoot 'em up shit or some wild like yeah. just drug dealing shit. And it's like yeah. with you, X. I mean, Kodak. You know, Kodak has a little bit of that in his music, but like, it's so different now. It's like, dude. Yeah. Do any of y'all feel pressures? Because in New York, they always say like, oh man, it gotta be like it was before. Do y'all do no, y'all not feel no. pressure? Do y'all just feel like evolving everything? We evolving a lot of shit mm -hmm. because like when Raider Clan stepped out, we made it okay for like motherfuckers to be different. Mm -hmm. We made it okay for that shit, you mm -hmm. know? Like the first person I seen with colored dreads was Ruben Slick. Mm -hmm. That was the first person I ever seen with colored dreads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then I see everybody with colored dreads now. And then, um. It was just like, in this one Florida region, bro, like, we were just like, let's just make it okay to be different. You know? That's what it was. And it was either, we was on some super dark shit, because if you think about it, drug dealing, killing, shoot 'em up shit, that's all dark shit. But mm -hmm. our shit was like mainly like super, some super dark shit. <laughs> yeah, I and mean. Then think about like the culture, you gotta think about like the melting pot, and then you got, you know, Haitians, um, people from the Bahamas, you mm -hmm. got Jamaicans, you got Cubans, you got, everything you got all types of races there you know what i'm saying and then you so you get different cultures and you learn about different cultures and then we just put it into one thing and most of us couldn't afford to go to the studio you know you forced to live in a city where it's like you go to south beach and it's like glitz and glam and you want to live that glitz and glam life even though even though it's going to get you killed eventually if you stay on the other side of the bridge mm -hmm. you get me and with that, some of us couldn't afford studios and stuff, and the ones that could is because like some people, you know, that was drugging and stuff was putting them in, putting us in those studios. Right, and right. But most of us recorded from our house, and that's why you get from that lo-fi, that crazy shit, that crazy sound. Like, because most of us was recording on Mixcraft, Audacity, whatever, Logic, GarageBand. We was just using what we could get our hands on right. at the time, because none of us could afford. Is that where like the distortion and the music and all that shit comes from as well? That's where it all came from. It's all organic. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like y'all did that on your own because that's all y'all had given to y'all with the the funds y'all had to record. Yeah, that was it. I mean, like. Usually, like, when I got my first microphone, bro, before I got my first microphone, I recorded it on a $5 mic from Walmart. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Gee. When was this? So I met, we first met, we just talked about it, 2013-ish. It was a different Denzel. Clearly, you've been through a lot since then. Your career has evolved. But, like, at that point, you were just, like, young and so hungry and, like, so excited for, like, a shot. Can you even remember what it felt like to be in that moment? Yo, man, I was just having fun. <laughs> that was the whole bad. thing. It was, it was just fun for me. Like, it's still fun for me now, now that I found who I was, mm -hmm. but I found who I am. But it's just like, at that moment, it was fun. I just wanted to prove to everybody that, yo, I'm the best, period. I didn't care what it was. Like, I was just like, yo, I'm a merc. 
I'm gonna mark that shit. I'm gonna eat. Hey, hey, facts of fiction, and tell me if you agree with this with this statement because I've been thinking it for a while. Like, uh, I I feel like Florida is like the new Atlanta, but new Atlanta. No. In, let me let me no. finish explaining. <laughs> in in no. terms of in terms of no. influence and dominating no. the culture. Atlanta is Atlanta. No, well, well, Miami is Miami. Yeah. No, not even Miami. South Florida is South Florida. We have but, our own sound. No, no, Atlanta no, no, has no, their no, own sound. No, not not, not sound. -wise. That's what it is. I mean, We're in, not in terms Atlanta of in terms of no influence in the culture, I feel like the music now coming from I hear niggas trying to trying to get that sound from whatever artist that's from Florida. Like I see niggas trying to sound like Kodak that's not from Florida. They trying to even copy the speech pattern. I see people trying to make music like Pump. I see people trying to like it's. I feel like people are looking to that as a cultural or musical hub for just new sounds and creativity and what happened is just like what happened with Atlanta is that it people across the country and across the world copy it okay right when you put it like that yeah, yeah. okay but I thought you was gonna say <laughs> oh no no no, <laughs> no, 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 no Florida no, is like new that. Atlanta no no no, 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 no. no, no. Let Atlanta no, be Atlanta no, no. Atlanta is Atlanta yeah, yeah of course Atlanta but South Florida is South Florida period and I get what you're saying like it's influencing the whole mm -hmm. like the whole globe to do what we try to do yeah, yeah. but it's it comes from where we come from. This is like, we built this from the soil, you get me? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but if you put in that term, then with influence, then yeah, I understand. Yeah. I, and and, and w when, I, when I say that, right, I think it's gonna just continue to grow. It's gonna continue to grow because I believe like- Of course uh, it's gonna grow. Uh, I mean, if it's not gonna grow, bro, it's just gonna be stagnant and that is just gonna go away until somebody else revamping and claim it as their own. Okay, and then that's when I get to an issue I usually point out with New York, right? I feel like the youth, and allowing the youth to grow and like do what they do, you can't like be consistently thinking, well, Trick Daddy used to do this, so what, 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 these these young youngins gotta be doing that. You allow them to do them, find their own pockets, find their own like culture inspirations and just keep building, and you're gonna get that over time with talented I mean, think about it. Look at Atlanta, when everybody in Atlanta was rapping the same, right? Yeah. Who came out? Outkast, right? Yeah. And Outkast did something different. Exactly. The Dungeon family did something different that Atlanta wasn't seeing before. And then it influenced a whole race of people to come out, right? Yeah. A whole pocket of people to come out. So forth and so forth. Same with Gucci Mane. Influenced a whole pocket of people to come out. I mean, think about New Orleans. Like, things wasn't, yeah, like, when Hot Boys them. came out yeah. and shit, and then Wayne took off and all that shit was happening. had a real extensive, like, knowledge of, like, hip-hop. Yeah. Like, for real. Because, I mean, we was talking about, like, Raekwon lyrics and all of that. Like, what... What's some of the shit that you grew up listening to that people wouldn't think you know? <laughs> like, for real. Because I'm saying it's like, you from South Florida. How old I said, I, I finished. I'm 23. He's yeah. 23. That's amazing. Because we have people out here saying Tupac is whack, and then we have someone right. like him. I just like encyclopedic knowledge. I, I said a Raekwon lyric, and you finished it. And that album is 20, the same age almost as you. So it's like, so what's some of the shit that you grew up listening to? Did you get that from your brother? Like No. I got it from my dad and my mom. What? Yeah, my parents. <laughs> like, my dad and mom used to, like, you gotta think about it. Most of my brothers are born in the 80s. Mm -hmm. One of my brothers is born in the 90s, the same as me. He's only two years older than me. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Moot. <laughs> anyway, um, who else? Um, my mother, she's born in the 60s, and my father's born in the 50s. Okay. So I just, and I'm the last one. I'm the last child. Oh, you the baby? Yeah, I got all that music from way down. And then my grandparents were still alive at the time. Yeah. So they was putting me up on game about a lot of stuff. Okay. Yeah, with music. And then I had friends that was listening to weird stuff. And then I was going to art schools and stuff. And they was putting me on, on like, shit like Tame Impala, like Necro and st shit like that. Yeah. And like Immortal Technique and stuff. And then stuff that I, you know, got into on my own. Like Ari the Rugged Man, F MF Doom, like... Who else? Nas. I remember when I first heard Illmatic, and I was like, legit when I first heard Illmatic. Yeah. You know? And then my brothers, they was really on some, like, they was on some goon shit, so I was listening to Plies. <laughs> yo, Plies you know got Twitter. Plies hard, bro. Plies first album Plies, is crazy. Bro. Yo, 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 people be, like, I know some people who, who don't even really know when Plies was, like, the guy musically, like, uh, just, even know, just nationally. You know who told me to listen to Plies' album? Beanie Siegel. The, it was the, really? the Last Testament. Yo, he told me, he's like, yo, he said, you heard about this nigga Plies? I was like, the nigga that got busted, baby? He like, nah, he said, I'm telling you, listen to his Bustin album. His you heard Goons Lurking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one of my, my, my favorite Plies right. songs, All Black. 
Oh, oh shit. Yeah, like I fuck with plies. Oh, well, but see, the I thing is, like, with, with me growing up, I never, like, I never, I, I was saying this before, I didn't know where any artist came from. I just turned on TV, because when you turned on Video Music Box or UMTV Raps, it wasn't really centered on where somebody was from. It was just like, yo, they a dope MC. Right. It wasn't really about where you was from. It was just like about music. Like, I didn't think anything about Snoop being from Long Beach as a kid. I just knew I liked his music. Yeah. You know? But like most of the shit I came up on, it was like James Brown, Isaac Hayes, Norman Brown. Um, my, my grandmother really loved Tupac, which was weird. <laughs> <laughs> she loved Tupac. Wow. Like, like she was like, I ain't a killer, but don't push me. It's just the sweetest joy, and that's Your the good really like, dope. Yeah, you got a, a musical family. That's like, dope. All of them love music. All of them love music, man. And like, I remember when I used to be on punishment a lot. Like, I never used to get ass whoopings out the gate. Mm -hmm. I just used to get on punishment for. A lot. I think the longest I've been on punishment for was like six months. Damn. <laughs> yeah. What'd you do? Shit. <laughs> six months worth of punishment. Yeah, that's, right. that's serious. <laughs> so the only thing I had was radio. Like, my father was like really into Public Enemy. Like, yeah. he liked Chuck D. He liked Flavor Flavor and shit. And I was watching Flavor of Love at the time, so I was like, yeah, it's like it's crazy yeah. seeing Flavor of Love and seeing what he was like a part of. Because yeah. he's one of the most, he's a part of one of the most historic groups in hip hop history ever. But when it came down to my family, it wasn't just music though. I was re I'm really into movies too. Like I like watching movies. I like music. Anything that deals with some type of art form, I fuck with. So do you see yourself creating outside of music in the future a lot? It seems yeah. like it's destined, right? I started drawing first. Mm. I started drawing first. So with that, I was just like, yo, I fuck with this. But I got into rapping when I was like in sixth grade. So like, what would would you draw like a comic book series? Would you like what would you do with those talents if you could? Do anything. Comic book series. Um, shit, I was thinking about movies, making movies and stuff. Because I was in a film strand at this school called Design and Architecture. Fuck y'all, by the way. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> like I was in a film strand in that school before I got kicked out. And like... That's what you said, because they kicked you out. Why they kicked you out? Because I wasn't doing shit. He done been on punishment. It's not, no, no, let me tell you. 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 Let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what I did. See, look, that school was the reason I got on punishment for six fucking Oh, here we go. All right, that's one. Two, it was like, I was doing the work, but it was like, oh, yeah, he's not really a good artist. So they, boop, kicked me the fuck out. Then I went to my home school. It was two types of survival when it comes down to schools like that. When you get bust from a bad neighborhood, going to a, like an artsy school and mm -hmm. stuff, their survival is like, you know, get good grades and surviving in school so you could go to college like Micah or something, mm -hmm. you know? But when I got kicked out and went to Carroll City High, it was a whole different ball game to survival. Mm. Hold, you had to literally survive. That was, the, that was the main thing. You had to literally survive in Carroll City. Well, glad you survived. Glad you're here. Glad yeah, you're making right. music. Glad you're putting out a great album. Um, sorry for everything you've been through, but like. I mean, you can't you can't apologize for you, what's right? supposed it to happen. It makes you right. It makes the person right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Uh, r recently, of course, with the uh, untimely passing of X, um, you guys had a lot of history. What was what was your relationship with him before he died? And and we we saw the tattoo on Instagram. You got to remember him. Um, I mean, how did all that like? What happened was like. Me and X relationship was like, it go like this, and it go like this. Mm. Go like this, go like this. Not but relate. at the end, it was like, it was like this at yeah. the end. You know, you just gotta understand like, you know, he was fighting a lot of, within himself too, you know. It's, it's hard, man, like dealing with like a case that's like been going on for a while, everybody calling you this, and you know, just like dealing with the whole controversy around your name and everything and what it brings. Like it could get hard. He's on. He was only like, I don't know, like 17, 18, 19 years old. But when I first met him, you know, it was cool. Like when he stayed with me, it was cool, straight up. No bad, nothing bad about it. You know what I'm saying? When it came down to the Geneva situation, that's where it got turbulent between me and him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's just like, what the fuck? You could just call me. You feel me? If anything. And that's what me and him talked about. And then go like this and go like this. I'll have a certain grudge, he'll have a certain grudge about whatever. But the last conversation we had, it was talk about everything. We talked about every single thing that what was bothering him about me and what was bothering me about him. And we literally got it to where it was like the most stable thing we had in a long time from where we first met. Because when we first met, it was stable as shit. It was stable as fuck. Nothing bad. 
Cause like I could tell you straight up, like he put me on stuff like One Punch Man, like you know what I'm saying. I like One <laughs> Punch anime, Man, yeah, like, hell yeah. anime shit, yeah. And then we were talking about J Stars and stuff. But the last conversation we had, it was just basically about like life path numbers, same sign, like what was going on with our lives, like what's happening, why you changed this, why you changed this, why was this going on, what's your, like what is God, like who is God, like what is it about, like what is this life about, what you had to do in order to be a better person. But me and him had the same perspective about a lot of things. And both of our life path numbers are six and both of us are both Aquariuses, mm. same sign, same everything. And it was just like, yo, he was like, bro, it makes no sense why me and you weren't best friends. And I was just like, yeah, I understand that, but you were like a brother to me at a point. You know what I'm saying? You're still like a brother to me if we were able to talk. And that's why it never boiled over, like our relationship of us beefing or whatever, mm -hmm. it never boiled over. Cause like, even when the first time I got tried, I went to his court date. Cause I don't got no problem with nobody and I'm gonna keep it that way. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was. And like, he was like, you know how to transmute energy. And I was like, yeah, because if you don't transmute that energy, bro, it'll just be bad. And just like, we both know that flaw and perfection, that's just a perception that everybody gives. There's a flaw in something until you perfect it. But even later on, it might be a flaw. And that's what mainly was talking about, flaws and perception. Flaws and perfection is just a perception that everybody see. And like me and him both know like I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, but one thing that is like real that we could both grow and learn from each other. And that was mainly the conversation me and him had. And we usually talk for like three hours, three to two, two hours, like long con conversations. And like that was the last of our conversation. Yeah. And we was friends. Yeah, it's sad. I know like the, the whole hip hop community, I mean, of course, especially, you know, like I think people who knew him and who talked to him and especially who have been around him they probably saw a different side than most got to see so like especially like after his death it, it's always dope to get some additional perspective on um who he really was as a person i mean if you see the tats on his face most of them had a meeting every tattoo on his body had a meaning and like that's what he was and like i remember just like a lot of things yo like one day he'll be like super angry one day he'll be super happy. One day he'll be super depressed. Like, he'll just go through moods. Like, he'll go through a lot of moods, but. But you were able to understand, because you've said that sometimes you have similar experiences, right? Like, you'll go through, you'll share yeah. something, maybe you'll delete it. But that was one of the reasons why it was kind of turbulent, because it was like, it was a failure to understand each other. And then the last thing, when we actually sat down and actually talked and like, understood where each other was coming from, mm -hmm that relationship was so easy to maneuver. Mm. Like, he's powerful. He understood I was powerful. He understood everybody had a certain power level and understood how people could go beyond that. And the main thing was about evolving. Don't worry about being perfect, just evolve as much as possible. It's good that you guys got to have that conversation though, that it like clear the air, talk about everything. That's nice. Absolutely. Right. Um, all right, so we probably have more questions about music for you, but look, on Thursdays, we usually have a segment called Struggle Exchange, where we'll ask fans to send us some video questions. If you're down, maybe we can answer a couple together. Let's do it. Okay, cool. All right, let's check out the first question. You think that Instagram and Facebooks and all of that, Twitters, will start implementing a streaming type uh, situation to these sites? All right, that wasn't the best part of the question. I think he was essentially saying, do we see a day when like, uh, it's not even like streaming services, music is streaming just on social media. So we know recently Jaden Smith tried to re-release his album yeah. on Instagram, but it's still uh, linked to somewhere else. But yeah, do you guys think that would ever happen? Yeah, because it's just gonna keep evolving. It's like new ideas, how to keep things fresh, how to keep their medias booming. It's gonna happen. It's not, it may not be now, but mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. Or it could be like, okay, I don't have the SoundCloud app, I don't have this out, but everybody has an Instagram or a Twitter or something like that. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna put a music video here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna put a music video here. Yeah, I'm gonna put a music video here. So it, wherever it goes, you can stream it. And that calls for whoever run these companies to team up with whoever is like distributing right. the music and which was like industry and stuff like that and to make it one thing. And that's how it happened. Yeah, I, I think that, I, well, I hope that 
we jump more into the business or getting to do business with these social media sites because like hip hop culture is what really makes these shits pop. You know what I mean? Like a, a lot of our, us being organic, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> like the Shiggy doing all of that shit. Think right. about how much engagement that just brings Instagram. Not just the song, but just Instagram, period. You know, like everybody was making such a big deal about Drake giving him some money, but you know how much people he drove to Instagram or how many times that was shared? You know, so hopefully hip hop culture could be a little bit more heavily implemented into pushing our ideas through it too, because I think I think it's just more more than hip hop culture. I think it's just music culture. It's in just general. music in general. Yeah, it's in general, because like you know, you got rock bands that will probably do that too. Mm. Hey, a hundred percent, that's gonna happen. It's already started to happen. By the way, like I, I, I make I, I've made like two parody songs, so I'm, I'm on like TuneCore. It's Name distribution. Parody. <laughs> Name parody. <laughs> this guy, serious rapper, look like fire, bro. Yo, the street. Anyway, <laughs> yo, so so they're distributed through TuneCore, this independent like um, distribution site. And they sent like a notice like a couple days ago saying, hey, listen, um, we're now offering that your songs could now be pushed through to Facebook. Mm. So now Facebook, if Which people, Instagram, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so if you have an artist page and your music is allowed by the people who control the music, obviously I'm, it, it's, it's just me, right? Yeah. Um, but I could imagine that they work with labels too to say, hey, yeah. if Denzel Curry wants to fucking put his music on, uh, on uh, Facebook, Link it up with his, his Facebook fan page. We'll get people streaming. I'm pretty sure they'll work out some yeah. type of rate. So, of course, that's going to happen. And it's inevitable because music is so much a part of culture. Just, like, social media is realizing that um, there's certain necessities um, to really have a lock on culture. Music is one of them. And it's only so long you could have people dancing to doing challenges to these songs and you have to hit up the record label to say, hey, let's let's license it or, or hey, do you want to block it or should we allow it? They're going to start saying, you know what, we're just we're a streaming service. So if if you're driving around in the car and music is coming on, that's streaming it. If someone's watching you on live stream, you're streaming it. So I think it is going there in the future. Yeah, it's it going to go there. And they just got to figure out the technology. Yeah. Think about how many people are going to flood in on their site. Just to see it. They already try to do it with, I remember they did that with Nas, I think, was it Wave? They tried to do it with? Like a little app that you had to download? Um, or, or no, it wasn't Wave. It was, um, no, it was Wave, but it wasn't Nas's album. It was um, Kids See Ghosts. It was that album. Okay. Right. So to get people to come Move in. Move over? Yeah. So you know how currently, so on the streaming services, people curate the playlist, et cetera. If all music ends up just on social media, is there still a level of curation? Or is it just like there's music? Go find the music you want. It's it's, it's it a wild wild west. It, it depends. Mm. Yeah, it's the wild wild west. I ain't gonna lie. It, everything starts out as a wild wild west, but in business, you have to turn chaos into structure. Mm. Mm. So that's how the internet started, and that's when companies started to realize. Because remember, people used to just steal music rapidly. Yeah, like, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I used to steal. Yo, we've all done that's, this. Yeah, yeah, Lime was the greatest <laughs> shit <laughs> <of> the <planet. laughs> Yeah, but the worst is when your mom but, would make a call in the middle of the night, fuck up your whole download. You gotta no, no, start from no, no, scratch. No, 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 yeah. However, though, like, like what, what they realize is that, yo, know, people are a lot of people. Some of this new generation. They're over the culture of paying for music. Mm -hmm. So how about you make money from the music, but just give it differently where it's not, they don't have to purchase it. Um, they could just pay for subscription. Yeah, because if it's like music. Which, 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 which the only mm -hmm. thing, and I'm sorry to cut you off, right. and I guess I'll throw this to, to Denzel. Um, I don't know if that exactly helps the artist because now, like say 10 years ago, people would just buy the album. Yeah. Now someone's like, man, I already paid $10 for my subscription. I'm gonna listen to everybody's album. It, it, we've seen artists like complain I mean, about not getting the same amount. They probably like getting monetized if you think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's paying for the subscription for it, yeah. to listen to everybody's album, and the more he clicks on your album, the more it gets downloaded or whatever. Think about those downloads and they can monetize those downloads and, and give it to the person. You get know what I'm saying? And like, you know, send it out and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know if it's making sense. No, 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 it's making sense. No, the only thing I'm saying is some artists, I've heard them say, well, you're paying $10 to listen to everybody's shit. Back in the day, you would have just paid $10 for my album. And so, so pretty much I'm going to get less money. So even if you listen to it a lot, I'm getting a piece of your $10 now as opposed to back in the day when people were just more buying the albums. I would get the entire ten dollars. So I think, but if Taylor Swift was it, mad about that. Saying, but if you think about, about the that, payouts. if you think about that, and you're getting less from there, 
it'll just make you want to build an ambiance around that album so people could pay for everything else. Yeah, because people, I mean, and now, I, I was just saying this earlier, like, uh, when I was in high school, all the shit that a street team would come and just give out the kids is now merchandise. Like, they would come give you um, shirts, and they would come give you, like, all of these little accessories with the album name on it. Now they sell all the shit because, I guess, because, you know, the, um, the sales are down, right? Yeah. And, I mean, one thing I say I like about this streaming era is that music doesn't leak the way it used to. Like, remember, like, somebody's album would leak a whole week early and then yeah. they're upset and then they're blaming the label. <laughs> it's like, you don't really see that shit no more. It's like, all right, we dropping this shit Wednesday night at 10 o'clock or Sunday night at 12. It's like, you could kind of pick your pockets where before albums only dropped on Tuesdays. Mm. Then it started going to Fridays. Now people drop them all types of times. You know? Yeah. Because you don't know who's going to Yeah, you don't know. What. Right. Like, if you drop, say it's a... Little artist and a big artist. If a big artist dropped that same week you drop, it's over for it's you. It's over. Right. It's over. Right. Done. <laughs> Time <Timing> Son. <laughs> <laughs> Done, son. <laughs> All right, you want to do one more question with us? Cool. All right, let's pull up the other guy with the everyday struggle background because that's some real, real fan moves right here. You guys have it? All right, here we go. Yeah, let's take a crazy. look. Who it is? What's up, everyday struggle? It's your favorite correspondent, Southside Chief. Back in the day, you used to be able to go up to like, Def Jam, if you got a hot record, and shop it. If they don't want it, you can go to Interscope, shop it. Today in 2018, what is the equivalent, or how can artists today shop their records to labels? Yo, Man. big shout out to Southside Chief. I don't even know how he got the old chairs. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, like, how did you do that? That's dope. Um, <laughs> Southside Chief, the wizard. He's resourceful. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, how can you shop his records? That's what he said. Well, I, or do you even need to shop a record? Wait, I don't think. No, nah, you don't. Because, like, as long as you got a fan base, as long as you got a cult following, like, basically whatever that's building you up right now, and then you got the music, music behind it, and, like, the followers and everything, and the influence, bro, the label's going to want to come to you. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what it should yeah, be. Like, uh, Instead of shopping so them, because you're like trying to most... shop your record, does that mean you're already like or, steps behind? You, you know what I kind of yeah. took his question to be like even okay, he's been making music, maybe even more than shop his record. Mm -hmm. How do you like even get in contact with a label for I mean, for, for, for multiple different reasons? And I was just I saying, mean, the, man, A is on Twitter, man. Use Google, bro. Just start. Yeah, I mean, DM. things are different because you know. It, I came from the era where there's no Instagram where you had to like, people had to sit after school and wait to catch. You used to have to read about these people or see an interview or see them next to an artist in the picture right. and then wait by the label and run up on them like, hey, do you need an intern? Now you can reach out. But as far as like shopping a record, like you said, I don't think, you don't really need to shop a record. Yeah. It, what happened, like when we seen Bobby Schmurder, right? When he had Hot Nigga, the clip got shared so much that everybody was like, yo, somebody has to find this kid. So he's not shopping his record. People are coming to him. Yeah. And then that gives, remember, Ak, you always talk about the leverage point. Like, when you have the leverage, then you dictate how the conversation, how you want the conversation to go. The thing about it is, nobody business to teach you business. Make sure that your shit is together because they might wave a nice, crazy check in front of you. Yeah. But on the back end, you're not getting that much pub. Or, you know, they got all types of tricky shit. Yeah, in, exactly. In, in the, 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 like, all the money show. that you... You're supposed to get, they, you know, lawyer, yeah. you know what I'm saying, shows, tours, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, especially when you think about it like this, because I was watching this documentary on NWA and shit. And, like, I remember when Shug Knight said, oh, y'all could keep everything else. I just want the masters and whatever. Right. And I was like, yo, that's when I figured it out. Before I even signed the deal, I was like, this nigga took the masters? And that's what you need? Everything else, right. And that's when I was like, okay, that's what I want. All right, sorry guys. Denzel said masters and the whole studio broke for like 30 minutes. You know why, right? Audio. You know why? Dino doesn't even have a mic now. I'm the sorry. They don't, they don't even want me to talk. They don't even want me to talk about it, but I'm gonna talk about it. Fuck it. Hey, look, it's like this, bro. When I first seen the in, like the documentary how Suge Knight just wanted the masters, and that's how I went into everything. And I feel like more artists should be encouraged to like get your masters, bro. Create a control, get your masters, do what the fuck you want to do. Because you was already doing what the fuck you want to do since day one. Why should that change? Because money is thrown in your face. I'm going to get money regardless. I don't give a fuck what it is. You That's know what smart, but our guy Wayno here, I'll just speak for you, right? Yeah, it's nobody's yeah. business to teach you business. Always say people see a check, they get super excited, they don't realize you're signing your life away. But it's interesting that you're learning all of this from documentaries. Hey, bro, it's right there. Like, I was just watching it random, randomly, right? To see how NWA broke up and how, you know, 
Death Row started. I just wanted to see how everything happened in history. And then when I seen, when they was talking about Suge Knight, Suge Knight came in, he was like, y'all could keep whatever else they had, they keep these records, whatever. I just want the masters. And we gave it to him. And I was like, so that's what happened. And then when they, so when my manager approached me, he was like, how you want to handle this deal? I was like, I want my masters. I saw what Suge did, I'm doing that. I'm doing that shit. Whatever the fuck he did, I'm doing that. That's dope. Learning from documentaries and movies. All right, cool. If you don't have anyone to teach you, you can business, learn, man. right? That's amazing. Um, all right, yo, so we can't stay much longer, unfortunately, but we literally just had like a 30-minute conversation where cameras were rolling. So Camera gonna, was not rolling but, at like, all. There was no man. audio, so like we're going <laughs> we're gonna to try to like Nothing. get some of that and try to cut it into Yeah, we got to drop like a behind the scenes of this interview. Of this, because we had probably our had best so conversation fun. off camera. Yeah. Hey, but, man, some of that shit, I don't know. <laughs> Some of it can't go on camera, uh, but a lot of it was good. Um, but sorry for the technical difficulties, but Denzel, it's been amazing. Thank you for finally coming up here. You gonna dap me up for real? Man. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, All right, so Taboo out now. Act yeah. one, act two, yeah. act three. Act three tomorrow. coming out tomorrow night. Denzel Is this the camera Curry. I'm looking at? Uh, this is the camera I'm looking none at? None of them probably work. It doesn't even matter. Whatever. We'll see you guys Monday on Everyday Struggle.